Michael Thomas and Sean Payton appears that they are uh, at least trying to patch things up, and I think that's a step in the right direction after what we talked about earlier in the week. You know, there were all kinds of different stories floating around about Michael Thomas ignoring calls. He didn't want to talk to anybody. He delayed his injury and this and that. That Same guy that wrote the article a few days ago, uh, Patrick Waller, or sorry, Walker, from CBS Sports, wrote about the positive talks that the two are having. There are two things that are certain heading into the 2021 NFL season when it comes to Michael Thomas. He's not happy with the team, and the team is not happy with him. Now, where that road ends up is leading to anyone's guess, but it's been a lot more than just bumpy over the course of the past year. But it says that they have been talking. Like, everything appears to be okay. Thomas implied that the Saints were trying to damage his reputation a few days ago, but he and head coach Sean Payton have reportedly had positive talks towards a potential piece per Charles Robinson of Yahoo Sports. I, I don't know what to make of this. This is exactly what I would do if I were the Saint and I was trying to maybe move somebody out of town. Make it seem like, hey, everything's back to being good. He's a good player. He's a good teammate. It's just not going to work out here. Is that kind of what it seemed like to you? My only problem with that is, is his contract is just kicking in. Like the big extension that they gave him doesn't even really kick in this year. So yeah, it all gets of next the year. years, yeah, all the years left on this thing are. I think it's hard to get rid of him and get anything back in value. Yeah, it's hard for a team to give up assets and then have to pay the guy on the back end. So you're paying twice. Here's what I think you do. You're. I think you appease him for this year. He's going to sit out a lot of this year due to injury. Okay, I think yeah. we know that, right? We're all clear on that. We all understand that's going to happen. And we're okay, I think, with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think after whatever the quarterback situation does this year, which I think, my opinion only, it's going to be a huge embarrassing failure. I love Sean Payton. I think he is an unbelievable offensive mind. I I I listen. I think Josh McDaniels is an unbelievable offensive coach. You, you ain't making chicken salad with chicken shit, okay? That's what we saw McDaniels try and do that with uh, with Tebow. It yeah. didn't work. I, I well, no, he he couldn't do it last year with the Patriots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like your offensive talent outside of Alvin, uh, um, uh, Alvin, yeah. is, Alvin is nothing. Is nothing. You know, because you're not going to have Michael Thomas this year. For most of the year. Yep. Emmanuel your Sanders is gone. Michael Thomas your, isn't going to be here. Yeah. Your quarterback situation, I think, is absolutely atrocious. Now, I, I know that you're intrigued by it and you want to try this thing. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think so, so either. Let's let's pretend that next year they end up with a top tier rookie quarterback. Because let's say this is a huge embarrassing failure and they got a top eight pick next year. And every year in the draft, as long as you got a top ten pick, you can go get a really good quarterback. Okay, now Michael Thomas is a lot happier. Now Michael Thomas is able to find somebody that he thinks he can trust, that he can groom. The new quarterback's going to come in, and he's going to be the security blanket for him. He's going to be that guy's everything. He's going to be able to demand what he wants because he's going to have seniority and leadership over the new young quarterback. I, I think now everybody's able to be happier in the long run. That's what I think. If I'm the Saints, that's what I would do. I would try you, to ride this out, and when the quarterback situation blows up in their face, they either make a trade for a quarterback, it, maybe they can get Rodgers, Jesus, something like that, make a big move, or maybe they go get somebody next year. But if you don't have him this year and you, you realize you're four weeks in and you're not good, I wouldn't rush him back. I wouldn't bring him back at all. This is a full tank mode situation. Do you think if this quarterback situation blows up in Peyton's face, you think he's got anything to worry about job wise? Hell no. I don't, oh, I don't, hell no. I didn't no. think so. Joe Peyton but it, is still one of the top five coaches in the NFL. Yeah, but it's also his decision on this quarterback situation. And, okay, I tried something. It didn't work. Okay. Okay. I mean, what? As an owner, you'd be upset that this guy's been unbelievable for this long. And then he tried something new when our Hall of Fame quarterback left, and it didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You got all a right. Point. As long as he doesn't keep trying it, as long as he doesn't go two to three years wasting seasons with it, then I think I'm okay. I got to trust my guy to try it because if it works, and if for some weird reason this 
random ass Taysom Hill thing happens, then great. Now we've got one of the cheapest quarterback rosters in the league, and you know we can go pay for all these other toys. Yeah, and maybe we can win a championship the way you know Baltimore won a championship years ago, and 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 you know things like that. I, I feel what you're saying. I feel what you're saying. I mean, as an owner, there's no way on earth I'd fire my coach for trying something crazy. You no, just, not after. There's no replacing a Drew Brees with a drop of a hat. Who could they have gotten? Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, there's nobody to go get. There, uh, were, they, but there the, was a second. They would have. They would have had to taken the last quarterback in the first round, or the first quarterback taken in the second round. So that it would have been the next quarterback taken. And and who was that? The guy from from Stanford. They, no, the next quarterback taken was Kyle Trask. All right. Who? See, maybe I probably would have taken Kyle Trask over anybody else they took. All right. Maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe I, I'm not firing him, but I'm definitely sitting down having a conversation about, hey, man, you might have fucked this up. Yeah, I mean, you never know. At Tampa that's Bay, okay. ended up taking I him. mean, that's all right. Like, you, you should be allowed to screw stuff up, by the way. Yes, right? yes. Well, like, it wasn't perfect like, all the time. Is Peyton the one? Peyton's not the one that drafts. Like, I think I've, I think he's got a say in it. But I'm gonna bet he has. I'm gonna bet he has a big say in it. This is this is not. This is not a situation where, you know, he's Mike McCarthy and he just sits there and calls plays. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, this is a little bit different. A little bit different I, situation. I, I think he runs that football team. So, as it sits with Michael Thomas right now, it's a, it's a two-way street, but it looks like Thomas is open to at least getting past the, uh, the toxicity in the relationship, and I think that is a good thing. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.